This woman, let's call her Designer. And Designer has a huge problem. A man just died in the backseat of her car and she doesn't know what to do with the body. So this all started when one day Designer goes to clean her stepdad's house. We'll just call him Stepdad. Now Designer's 37, she's a successful interior designer, and Stepdad has been in her life since she was a teenager. Even long after he and Designer's mom divorced, she still calls him Dad. Now that they're older, they live next door to each other, and she helps him out with stuff. So she's cleaning his house for him one day and she accidentally bumps the mouse to his computer, which wakes up his desktop. And there, boom, designer sees that stepdad's wallpaper is a nudie photo of a woman's body. Whose body was it? Hers. And so designer's like, what the f***? And she gets on his computer and she searches and she finds literally hundreds of nudie photos of her. And they're allegedly organized and they're categorized into folders by body part. And she's devastated and she's disgusted. She took these photos consensually for previous boyfriends. How did stepdad get them? And she can't sleep. She's wondering if he's stalking her. I mean, this is tormenting her really bad. So after a few days, she comes up with a plan. A plan to make sure stepdad never does this to anyone else. Now this whole time, stepdad hasn't been at home. He's been at the hospital because he's got an injury. And when it's time for him to come home, he needs a ride. And designer's like, sure, I'll come pick you up. Because she hasn't confronted him about the photos yet. So she shows up to the hospital to pick him up. And he's happy to see her. I mean, she brings him chocolates and Jack Daniels, like two of his favorite things. Now, allegedly, she has pumped one of these items with stepdad's prescription pain meds. And on the way home, he consumes those items. So by the time they get back to his house and she pulls the car into his driveway, he He's completely passed out. And this is all a part of her plan. Poison him with his own pain meds, then strangle him, then carry him to his own bed to make it look like he died of an overdose in his bed. So there he is in the back seat of her car, passed out. So step one is taken care of. But there's a problem with step two. Designer's not strong enough to carry his body into the house by herself. She also doesn't really want to strangle him. So this whole time, she's been texting with a shady friend of hers, who we'll call Fixer. So she asks Fixer to come help her strangle stepdad and then carry him to his bed. But Fixer isn't available. But he recommends another guy who can come do it. Other guy comes over and he sees what's going on. And he's like, uh, I misunderstood. I thought you needed help carrying a sick guy to his bed. Like, I didn't know you wanted me to strangle someone. Hell no. And he leaves. So then Designer's like, okay, fine. I'll strangle. Him. And she takes a plastic bag and she puts it over stepdad's head. So that takes care of step two. But she still isn't strong enough to carry him to his bed. So then she texts an ex, this guy, Adam. And Adam eventually shows up. And at this point, Designer is panicking. I mean, there's an unalived person in the back seat of her car. So Adam gets there and Designer like immediately just vomits all this information on him. She tells him about the nudie photos. She tells him about her plan to carry him into the house. And she also tells him that stepdad is no longer alive. And that she poisoned him with his pain pills and suffocated him with a plastic bag. And Adam is like, I want no part of this. And he is freaked out and he leaves. So then Designer is there all by herself. She doesn't know what to do. So she leaves stepdad in the car overnight. That next morning, Adam is still freaked out. So he calls the police. Well, what exactly are you trying to report? Last night, a friend of mine asked me to come over. He said that she had possibly killed her stepdad. And now the police are looking for stepdad. That same morning, Designer gets an idea. Maybe a wheelchair could help her carry him from the car to the bed. So she drives to the hospital. Now, stepdad is still in the back seat of her car. So she drives there and she goes inside and she steals a wheelchair and she drives back to stepdad's house. And now she's parked in his driveway again and she tries really hard to get him out of the car and into the wheelchair, but she still can't do it. So she just leaves him there in the driveway and she stacks a bunch of old boxes and trash bags around him. So he just looks like a pile of trash. Now, eventually, police show up to stepdad's house. Because remember, Adam called them. And they're looking for stepdad, and they're knocking on his door, and they walk right past the body several times, and they never see it. So they bring designer into the police station, they question her, but they don't really have any evidence, so they let her go. The next morning, police go back to stepdad's house to do a welfare check, because at this point, he's a missing person. And finally, an officer finds his body there in the driveway, buried under the pile of trash. That same day, they arrest designer, they charge her with stepdad's murder. She goes to trial, she gets convicted, and she's now in prison serving 25 to life. And by the way, her interior design social media page is still up. And all this happened in Solana Beach, California, so shout out to California.